can't catch me now. You can't, you can't, you can't. <laughs> Yo, what up? Today we've got Olivia Rodrigo. She's singing Can't Catch Me Now. I've been so excited to hear her sing this live ever since she released it. You can watch my original reaction to that here. But real quick, before we get started, today's video is sponsored by Fume. It can be super hard to kick your bad habits, especially if you're trying to learn how to sing. Trust me, I've been there. I'm always there. <laughs> but that's why today's sponsor, Fume, is so awesome. Fume is an innovative, award-winning, flavored air device that helps take the bad out of your bad habit. Woo! <laughs> it just tastes good. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of hot, harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. You just load up your favorite fragrance right in here. Close it up and you can kind of vary the amount of airflow that you want. One thing I really, really like about it is that it's cool and like twisty and it makes this cool little clicky sound. And so it's something that I just kind of like, I hold and I fiddle with and I just like, just giving my hands and my mouth something to do. That's not bad for me. It comes with tons of different flavors. My personal favorite is the white cranberry. However, a lot of people might like the crisp mint, which is their best seller, by the way. It's actually surprising how flavorful it is and how long the flavor stays in this thing. I didn't expect it to be as satisfying as it is. <laughs> and it also just kind of looks cool. If this is something that you're interested in, go ahead and check out tryfume.com slash Tristan Paredes. You can use code Tristan Paredes to get a discount off your order today. And there's a link to that down in the description as well. So thanks a lot, Fume, for sponsoring today's video. It really, really does help out the channel. Thank you guys for checking out Fume. All right, let's jump back into it. Ooh! Big change already, we have an electric guitar instead of an acoustic guitar. I have high hopes for this. In the sense that I think it's gonna be so, do something cool and different, okay. Gotta turn this up. Oh, that guitar is such... The electric guitar with the little... I don't know what the effect is. Y'all guitar nerds, tell me in the in the comments below. Like that phase effect. It's giving this a completely different vibe. It almost gives me rock right now. Wait, wait, wait. And she has a drum set. Yikes. This is going to be so cool. Oh. She's... Uh, I thought I thought that she was reaching out to me. This needs to go turned up all the way. I'm not gonna lie, Guts was great. You can check out my reaction to that. <laughs> it's finally all uploaded. I think I've played this song more than any song on Guts. I don't know, y'all let me know down in the comments if I'm different, if 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 y'all are the same. Her voice is so, it's just so smooth. She has air on most of her vocals here. That's gonna change as it goes on, obviously. But there's something about this song to me, and I could just be making this up, gonna be honest, but I think the fact that it's kind of detached from her as a person, like her personal life that is, is giving her a little bit more freedom in her voice than I've heard in a lot of other performances. Although that's an intentional decision on her part. She always has this little bit of an angst when she's performing. I'm not getting as much of that here. And so it's letting things be a little bit more flowy. And I like that. Like I like hearing the side of her voice. Thought it go over my head. I bet you figured I'd pass with the winter be something easy to forget. I 
I feel so bad interrupting her right before the climax. <laughs> huh? But I also want to be sure you guys get a, a couple tips. Okay, here's a really great example, I think. And it kind of ties into what I said a little bit earlier. So her voice oftentimes has this little bit of a... Uh, it's like uh, kind of like a hold I talk about a lot on my channel what I really like about what she's doing in this particular performance is she has that little bit of a hold but there's so much of this air that's passing through at the same time that it's kind of helping to relax things because it's very easy for a lot of singers when they're singing with that particular technique to over tense right because even the way I describe it I feel I'm there, you kind of tense up to get that sound when it comes to singing it's like you have these layers right you learn something one way with all of the extra tension and then you learn how to relax and let that go. What that is essentially is having good breath support. When you over squeeze something, everything locks up. And a lot of times people think breath support is about locking up and gritting down. My opinion, most of the time it's about the opposite. It's about learning how to have the minimum amount of effort required while allowing things to kind of just move. See if you can take a listen for that. How smooth that is. And I'm so curious how it's gonna tie into this this latter part. Let's go, let's go. I'm, I'm blasting it. I've talked about this a lot with her voice, but all of these switches in and out of chest voice and into falsetto and kind of cracking or yodeling, whatever you want to call it. It's actually quite tricky if you ever want to try it yourself. This is so cool. To, I'm so sorry for pausing it. Oh my God, it's so cool. She is so shouty. I say the word shouty, not because I want you guys to shout or because she's actually shouting. That's just the quality of the sound. It is so relaxed and such good technique and such good breath support, right? Because she's not clenching anything up. It is just flowing, even though she's doing these shouty sounds. A lot of people, when they start, when they're trying to get this sound, you care, you care, end up doing something like that. Are you care, cracking, care, having it be as clean as you can get it while still maintaining the, the shouty quality, really beautiful. I don't think we hear her doing this very often. She has that one line in Trader where she kind of does something like this, but. This is so clean and it sounds just, oh my God, just so good. Oh, that was like, that wasn't like goosebumps. That was like a, <clears throat> it's the, like into the heart. And then it like reverberated into the, like, into my concealer. That was so good. We got to hear that one more time, please. Into your town. You can't, you can't catch me now. You can't, you can't, you can't. But she changes the quality of her voice as she goes up, which is pretty common because you usually don't want to carry something that shouty up that high. It can be done, but usually as you go up, you want to change things up a bit because there's, it's just too much. You can't, 
It gets like, ah! like that. And at a certain point, actually, that vowel stops working. It changes from to as a little bit of that hold that I talked about at the beginning. But she's weaving it in to take off some of the effort and some of the volume and some of the, the punch. You can, you can, you can't. And the better that you get at the uh type of a thing, the more you can kind of disguise it so nobody can really tell that's what you're doing. In this particular example, she wants to bring out that she's doing this to, to make it sound a little emotional. You can. She really kind of goes into that. But generally, you know, when you're singing normally, let's say, not that this is abnormal sing. Oh, it is a little bit abnormal. She's trying to make it sound like that note is like very difficult for her for the sake of emotional expression. But generally, when you're just trying to, to do the note clean, you want to try and disguise this transition and this change in your voice so that people in the audience can't pick up on it as much. Can't catch me now. Not can't, always. Can't, can't, can't. It's gorgeous. Dude, her, her, like, like I said, this has to be like one of her best live performances straight up. It has to be. Uh, again, I think part of that is just for some reason, the song is making her a little bit looser, but maybe there's other performances that I've been missing. Maybe she's just getting more comfortable in live settings. It could be a number of different things. This is by the way that little head thing that she does she doesn't do this a lot of the times but it could help you guys at home if, who are struggling with vibrato wiggling something eh, whether it's your head or uh, i don't know so it can it could be helpful but that's what she's doing there She's so relaxed. Do you remember her on Saturday Night Live? That was like one of her first like big performances, how nervous she was. She's, it's so easy for her now. Can we appreciate the backing vocalist for a second? No, we cannot, shut up. <laughs> Just kidding. It takes incredible skill to blend together, create one voice so seamlessly. I didn't even like really hear them. Like I, I knew that they were there, but they did such a good job supporting. You know what I'm saying? Being more like a choir instead of having lots of individual vocalists, which is a difficult thing to do because you have to really pay attention to what everyone's doing. She's such a good performer, it's crazy. What I love about her songwriting is her capability to make songs so singable. That's actually true. Whenever she performs, the crowd can also sing with her. You know what's so funny? Sometimes I will see like a performance and the singer will be like, if you know the words, sing along as they're about to go into the hardest part of the song. And not only do they do that, but they start doing riffs that are not on the album. And it's like, girl, how am I supposed to sing along with this? First, <laughs> you're just making shit up on the spot. How am I supposed to follow you? Not to mention that half of the fucking audience is breaking their vocal cords trying to sing it at the same time. Come on, give us a break. Can we all just agree that the song was written so perfectly and beautiful and should get so much more attention? Yeah, actually, yeah. Like I said, I've been listening to the song more than a lot of the songs on Guts, or maybe even all of the songs on Guts. Brother, you really gotta mow the grass right now. Oh, he's not mowing the grass. He's riding his motorcycle. It's been snowing like crazy out here. My neighbor's been riding their fucking tractors, motorcycles. It's fine. I don't, it doesn't really bother me. But anyway, I guess they've decided today's video is over. So be sure that you subscribe to this channel if you like this kind of video. It was so fun. I am so excited, you guys, to make more content for everybody. She also did Vampire. I don't know if I'll actually react to that. Cause girl, you perform Vampire like 10,000 times by now. Enough is enough, but maybe. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh! Anyway, until next time, Tristans. And Tristram! Peace. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Actually, check out my Patreon for more in-depth singing technique information. I have a video over there talking about Olivia performing, I think, Vampire. <laughs> anyway, until next time, peace.